Okay, it's been a little while since we've had an update, so uh, I can take a little tour of the greenhouse and let you see how things are going. And you can see over here on the right, I cleaned that table out of there and I'm going to put a big ebb and flow bed in here. And I got the saw horses in here and getting all set up so the height's right so that it'll drain back to the uh, fish tank. And in the meantime, while I'm getting that, I put some beto buckets in for some uh, tomatoes and peppers. And it's just basically got a drip irrigation line running in, carrying a little stream of uh, the, the water into uh, basically a bed of perlite. It's just got the tomatoes and the pepper plant growing there. Doing really well. I mean, as you can see, I got some uh, good fruit started, a lot of blossoms. Uh, nice, healthy, nice, healthy plants. So I'm looking forward to starting to harvest uh, fruit off of these any time now and start making salads and breakfasts and stuff out of them. Uh, over there we got the uh, the engine of the machine here. I uh, got my uh, tilapia in there. Uh, they're doing pretty well with even though the temperature is getting pretty low with uh, I got the way of heating the water with the solar panels. I think I've covered that in the past but we'll take a look at those near the end here. We got some spaghetti squash plants that are just kind of taking over this uh, trellis work up above. You can see I got a big fruit hanging down there. Big head, head thumper. And I'm over here on my floating bed doing really well. It's been a couple of years I've been using that. Um, the NFT trays here, I, uh, they're just downspout and I 3D printed this end piece that I uh, put on there, just put on with RTV. And they work a lot better than the gutter I had. In fact, I put two of them in this year. I really like this NFT setup. It's a lot cleaner, looks nice. I think I'm going to put more of those in over the years here. Uh, they, they work so well. But you can see the plants even in the floating beds. I got red Russian chard and some nice kale going here. Down the other end of the get started. Got some lettuce going. As you can see, uh, you know, it's a it's a really clean setup. I, I can't say enough about these NFT trays. And you got some babies starting down here. They'll be uh, moving on up into the NFT trays after the roots get down, hang a little bit into the water. And see over here, we talk a little about skeddy squash. You can see this one was hanging down so bad, I had to put a put a little hammock to hold it up out of the way. It's one of the bad sides about having these plants grow up and above. When they start having heavy fruit on them, they can actually uh, choke the choke the plant out or, or stretch the vines to the point they break. Here's another one here. I had to put something there to hold it up because it was going to rip the vine in half and it would kill the rest of the downstream fruit. So that's one of the things I probably uh, won't do that again. I'll have to think about uh, how to run those along the ground and still keep them in the sun. Here's my basil plant. It's about fifth or sixth year generation on the basil plant. Just keep carrying that, uh, that guy forward. And some more of the spaghetti squash because it's, uh, it's kind of cool having it make a little vegetation tunnel that you walk into and uh, have the thing. So but that's kind of the update. I figured I'd just do a quickie here. Not bad for uh, January 1st, 2018. Here we talk about having the solar panels that keep the water warm. A little solar panel so the pumps run when the sun shines, doesn't when the sun doesn't shine, or kind of self regulates. So that's the update. Hope that catches everybody up to where we're going and like the uh, aquaponics.